They are feasting on my eastern cottonwood quite well. Oh my god, they just took my eastern cottonwood. How could you? Hello everybody, Grace still plays and we're back with more Taito Ecology. No time for BS, let me tell you about the brand new patch that just came. This is patch 1.6 and it's got a couple of new things to add. Uh, at least if you are involved in the beta, which I am. So, this patch is in beta. One of the things that the developers suggested was not to use the pre-existing biome. And they said don't do it because any kind of weird funky stuff that happens will translate to the biome and you won't be able to fix it later. One of the things I do want to do real quick is to open up the rest of these zones so that we are gaining plenty of... Oh, let me get out of that. What's happened there? Plenty of energy. Click here to view your... Okay. Oh, there we go. Return. Yeah, that that <laughs> that makes it work a lot better. Okay, there we go. So all everything's all set up. We have 300 energy. So a couple of the things are there's apparently water in the fish now. Did I just say water in the fish? There's apparently fish in the water and they jump. There we go. There's apparently dyslexia in the water as well. And I seem to have caught it. Now I don't know if we're going to see any fish jumping right now. But supposedly that's something that can happen. Also, as you continue to place creatures and plants inside of your biome, you will hear different different ambient sounds. And I'm particularly interested in that because that was one of the suggestions that I had when I was talking with the developer in the discussion area. So that's really cool that they went ahead and added that. As you can see here, the name of this place is called the Garage backslash <laughs> uh, apparently I'm not sure if you can change this or not and like I missed a key and like fumbled and hit the enter key and that's what we ended up getting so that's our new home for now our new home of testing one of the things that I want to do is move right into putting down plenty of critters and plants and such oh wow apparently the mushrooms are getting beaten up by these prairie dogs as you can see, I put down some prairie dogs, and they are already, like, eating everything they can. Look at them run over to the, the buffalo grass over there. It is not pollinated. Well, no kidding, because I can't get a creature out before the grass gets eaten. Look at these guys! Look at it! I can't put down enough grass! Alright, how about some of these blazing stars? And some vetch. We'll put a little bit of everything down. A little bit of that. Yonder giant eastern cottonwood, because why not? So, the new way that the camera works is you can WSAD it, but you can also right-click and move your camera around to kind of see, and you can steer that way. The other thing... Oh, apparently there's little exclamation points above stuff when things have a low population. That's neat to see. Oh, look, our population is going up. Look at this. Seven, eight. That's cool. They're reproducing. So you can do that. You can press the E and Q keys to kind of like hover up and down. So you can go way up here if you want. That's kind of the change now is that it's almost like a free floating. You can scroll in and out with your mouse wheel. So you can pretty much go anywhere you want for the most part in your territory it's not like how you either had to be right on top of everything or you had to scroll out to the point where you couldn't see anything and i do like that now what's interesting is there's also these little informational boxes that are here i do not remember these so like the badger here it says can eat tough life forms and also can eat poisonous and venomous life forms so that's very interesting let's start getting some more grass down since these prairie dogs seem to have eaten everything that we put down. I think I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple of sage bushes too. When I say a couple, I mean it more than one. Put one there, put one over there, put one over here. I like these sage bushes. They're not as big as an actual tree, but they are big enough to let you know that they're there. There we go. And more grandma grass. We'll throw down a little bit of this. Now, I do believe that this reproduces as a, a viewer had mentioned to me. So it kind of, I don't know, I guess as time goes on, it multiplies. So that's good. So I don't have to sit here and put down like a million grasses. And I do appreciate that. 
I do want to put down a pollinator though, and that is for certain. Let's go ahead and find someone. We do have a moth, and I think we have honeybees as well. There we go, honeybees. I love me some honeybees. Let's throw, let's throw those guys right in the middle of everything. Look at them kind of swarming around their honeycomb. So let me tell you guys a funny little honeybee story. Um, wife and I were at the house. Things were going fine. I was outside mowing the lawn when suddenly I saw a bee. Now I have a lot of plants around my house and I do that on purpose because I like seeing the butterflies and everything else and I've been involved in landscaping and stuff like that for a long time. So I enjoy that. So I saw some bees and I was like, no big deal. They Bees are very, very docile. Pretty much I've seen unless they're Africanized. This is just, you know, from my, I'm not a, I'm not any kind of a biologist or anything. <laughs> but they're very docile unless you anger them. And like I said, unless they're Africanized. And so I wasn't, I wasn't really worried about it. And then I saw another bee and then I saw another bee and I was like, Hmm, you know, that's a lot of bees. That's a lot more bees than I had ever thought of. And when I kind of like followed one of them back to the source, I noticed that the source was in my roof. And I was like, this is interesting. So I had to hire a specialist in bee removal to go up into my attic and take a look at what was going on up there. And let me tell you guys, there was 80 pounds of honeycomb that they pulled out. <laughs> 80 pounds of honeycomb and honey. And it was actually to the point, let's put down some rattlesnakes over here. It was actually to the point where there was so many, so much honey, that it would have started bowing down my ceiling and it could have damaged my entire ceiling if I hadn't have caught it. So how's that? Honeybees can really, really move quick. And you know, I usually keep a decent eye on my property and I had not seen anything. So when those bees popped up, I pretty much, I'd like to think, noticed them at least, I don't know, within a, within a few months. Um, I know it doesn't seem quick, but I mean, when you're looking around your property and everything seems to be in order, you pretty much don't expect that there's going to be, you know, 80 pounds of honey sitting in your, in your attic. And I would have never known. They're totally silent. Totally silent. There was no buzzing inside the house. There was nothing that would have suggested to me that a massive quantity of bees was looming about. <laughs> And I just couldn't believe it when they were when they were removing them and they were removing the honeycomb and the bees and everything. And I saw how many there were. And the guy actually, he was really cool. He brought me up into the attic to show me exactly how many there were. He, he kind of just shined a light on them and they didn't do anything. They, they didn't attack. They didn't fly around. They didn't get spooked. They just kind of stood there on their honeycomb moving like in a wave it was almost hypnotizing it was very strange and he's like yep yeah, that's how many bees you got and when i looked at it it was just one solid mass of bees and the honeycomb that they were making was extending from the ceiling to the floor and it was done in sheets i don't know how else to describe it it was you know it was horrifying because it was happening inside my house and it had to be dealt with. But oh, what's going on with my bees over here? Look at this. These bees are getting the heck beaten out of them. Oh, and this is why. Look at this right here. Look at this right here. These prairie dogs are eating my bees. You can see them like kind of climbing the the bee stalk here. This, this little tree that these bees are hanging out on. I might actually put another set of bees over there. So... You know, other than the fact that it was, you know, uh, something I would not want to have happen to my house, it was very interesting. It was just an interesting thing to have happen. So, that's my little bee story. Figure I'd just let you guys know about that. I thought it was pretty unusual, and it gave me probably 
the most experience I've ever had with bees specifically. Let's go ahead and get ourselves some energy so that we can continue to put things down. And I'll put down some more mushrooms right over here. And probably some earthworms as well. I don't know, over here or something. Because I think that we have some frogs over here and they would probably enjoy that. While I'm at it, maybe some more moths as well. I'm not worried about the moth population getting out of hand and slaying everything else that's in our biome, quite honestly. Our biome's at 98%. So that's pretty good. How there's, how's the jackrabbits doing? 12 of 20. 12 of 20. Is everyone at 12 of 20? Okay. And there's a while until reproduction. Is everything pollinated? Oh, wow. My eastern cottonwood is actually getting quite, quite eated. <laughs> they are feasting on my eastern cottonwood quite well. Oh, my God. They just took my eastern cottonwood. How could you? Let's put down some big old cedar trees. <laughs> I know. I should be, I should be much more traumatized. There we go. Put down a couple of those big cedar trees. And we will also put down an eastern cottonwood. We'll put this right in the middle. There we go. There. Let's see how you guys like that. You're going to kill this cottonwood too? Better not. 171 leaves. Well, they're certainly trying, aren't they? So who's eating this thing? Who's, who's getting it? Is it, the, is it the buns? These bunnies here? Yeah, it sure is. It's you guys, isn't it? You can't lie to me. Let's zoom in. Take a little look-see. These buns are doing to my tree. Oh, they're teleporting inside of the tree. That's interesting. There we go, buddy. Remove yourself from my tree. Extract yourself from my tree. I don't like it when you perform dark rituals to get inside of the eastern cottonwood. While we're here, let's click on the biodex just to see if there's anything new or exciting or if they changed the layout of it okay all that looks pretty much the same so nothing too strange going on there how about some more switchgrass i bet you antelope would like some switchgrass boom good tall grass actually very tall grass just more down i'm gonna make like a hedge in switchgrass something just disappeared didn't it did you guys see that did i just lose something was it an eastern cot or not an eastern cottonwood was that a red cedar? It was a red cedar. They ate my red cedar right away. Man, you guys. Let's replace it with another in cottonwood. Come on. You guys going to take down my cottonwood too? I notice they things are eating plant life a lot quicker. Now, in one of the patch notes, it did mention that some of the herbivores would not eat. And that was obviously a problem because they would systematically starve. So... I wonder if I had experienced that, and that was one of the problems that I was having, why a lot of times my herbivores would just be, like, insta-dying. You know, I'd put herbivores out, I wouldn't really have any carnivores, per se. Oop, thank you for the Taito coins, folks. I wouldn't have any herbivores, really, and they were just going down left and right. It was, it was insane. Put some more creatures down. What type of creatures do I want to put down? I want some bison. Let's get some big old bison in here. Yeah, one on this side. And we'll kind of loom over here and put one right by the watering hole on this side. So, how do I feel about this type of camera control? I like it a lot. Let me tell you one of the things that I did so that man they got another eastern cottonwood let me show all right let's put down another eastern cottonwood jeez louise yeah let's put down another eastern cottonwood and i'll show you guys a setting that i went ahead and put in place so one of the settings that i put in place over here if you go to the well, let me do it again actually for you because i forgot exactly what it was gameplay options these three ticker marks are on normally. I took edge scrolling off. And the reason I did that is this. Apparently we are about to lose our earthworms because those are probably getting totally slain by the frogs. The reason I did that is this. I would find myself going down here and then going down here to grab this bar and drag it. And if your cursor 
would hit the edge of the map like that, it would like take you backward like this. So I was moving, or you know, I would try and click something like up here, like this plus, and I would fly forward because I would miss it. So that's just something to consider. And now that I have it removed, I can put my cursor wherever I want and I can just control myself with the WSAD keys. And I find that much, much easier for my tastes. It helps me a lot. Let's put down a bunch of honey mesquites. Wow, is it just me or do these honey mesquites look a lot more impressive? Holy cow. And the honey mesquites are drawing some real interest from the mule deer. Look at that. Oh, look at this. It's actually this skunk bush sumac as well. More energy, I would say. There we go. And you guys have got to leave my eastern cottonwoods alone. Holy cow. Put one down over here. One down. Okay, so this this is going to be more like a forest. Because I'm going to have to put down eastern cottonwoods everywhere. Oh, man. It's a fight for survival in the plant world, folks. Plants are going down left and right. I've never seen anything like it. I got to tell you, if I leave this biome alone for three months like I often do, everything might be dead because there's not enough not enough plant life. So one of the things that you have to consider is putting out way more plant life than normal. Holy cow. That thing is gone again. Okay. Either these things are despawning or they're getting eaten at a very, very rapid pace. Let's do that. And I'm going to put down, how about this? Let's put down some sand cherries. We'll put down a little bit of everything, put down some cone flowers and I got to put it down quick. Otherwise I'm going to lose my my cottonwoods again. There, there's another cone flower over there. Buy up a little bit more energy because we can. And a bunch more honey mesquites because if you see the leaves and the fruit of the honey mesquites are very, very plentiful. There we are. So if we click on it, we can see that the leaf amount on the honey mesquite is 250 leaves, whereas the leaves on the eastern cottonwood is 200. So the eastern cottonwood is a very impressive looking tree, but leaf wise, it is like much less substantial than these honey mesquites. And I'm not sure if there's anything as substantial as them, even probably the red cedar. The skunk bush sumac is what? 175 perhaps? 150. So it's close, but not quite as good. Let's move over here into the plants that cost maybe 15 or so. Common milkweed. That looks like a good one. It's got, let's see how many leaves it's got in just a moment here. Once I can find a place to slap it on down. Those have 60, but you get several of them. So I think you get I think you get each one of these as his own individual one. I think so. I hope so. Well, maybe not. Either way, let's continue putting plant life down because you know we're going to have to. And there we go. So this is kind of just the new update to the game. I I can certainly see that the creatures are much more they, in, they interact with the, the plant life a lot faster. Maybe almost too fast. Because I feel like I can't even get these plants down fast enough. And like I'm trying to get these out so that they can reproduce and get pollinated and everything. But now it's totally possible as well that I'm going to need to s slow things down. So normally where we would have things moving uh, fast like this, I may have to put it at a normal speed. But I, I don't know, I kind of like playing with the fast forward button on because it allows us to get that much more done. So I don't know. What do you, th what do you guys think of these changes? I think they're much better. I do like this, this camera for sure. And if you hear every once in a while, you hear like an animal just kind of squeak or talk or something. Those are the little ambient sounds, it seems like. So that's what we got so far. That's patch 1.6. You can read about it in the Steam store, the other little notes that have come with it other than that. Hope you're enjoying the Tidal Ecology series. Stay foxy 
and much love.